In part 5 of our lesson on parametric equations, you will learn how to graph a plane curve, C. C is the set of all ordered pairs, x, y, where x is equal to f of t, some function of t, and y is equal to g of t, some other function of t, on some interval of t. These two equations, x equals f of t and y equals g of t, are called the parametric equations, and t is the parameter. So let's see how this works. In this example, we have to graph the plane curve, C, where x is equal to 1 minus 2t, and y is equal to 1 plus t, on the interval negative 1 to 4. Now when we talk about the interval being negative 1 to 4, this interval is for the t variable. So when we go to plug in values for t, they will go from negative 1 up to 4. And we are picking integer values for t just because they're the easiest ones to plug in. If for some reason we couldn't figure out the graph from plotting these points, then we would just try plugging in some more until we could see what the graph was. Now the parameter t we know we've chosen these values, so to find x and y, we have to plug into the parametric equations. So to find the x-coordinate, we have to do 1 minus 2 times t. So for this first one, if t is negative 1, then we know we are doing 1 minus 2 times negative 1. Of course, this becomes 1 plus 2, which is equal to 3. To find the y value, we have to do 1 plus t, so we will be doing 1 plus negative 1, which is equal to 0. And this is where the plane curve starts. Plane curves have a starting, an ending point, and a direction. So let's go ahead and plot this point. We know 3, 0 is where our graph will start. Next, t is equal to 0, and if we plug that in, we have 1 minus 2 times 0, which is equal to 1. Plugging it in for y, we have 1 plus 0, which is equal to 1. So we would plot the point 1, 1. Now certainly this is not enough information to create our graph, and we want to make sure that we are plotting values for t all throughout the interval. So let's carry on. If we put in a 1, we have to do 1 minus 2 times 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. To get the y value, we have to do 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. So this means we will plot the point negative 1, 2. We carry on. Plugging in t is equal to 2. We have 1 minus 2 times 2 which is equal to negative 3. For the y value, we have 1 plus 2, which is equal to positive 3. So we plot the point negative 3, 3. Plugging in t equals 3, 
the x value is 1 minus 2 times 3, which is negative 5. The y value is 1 plus 3, which is equal to 4. So we will plot the point negative 5, 4. Plugging in t equals 4, we get that x is 1 minus 2 times 4, which is negative 7. And y is going to be 1 plus 4, which is 5. So we come over to negative 7, 5. And this is where the plane curve stops. Now we can see that this is going to be a line segment. So we can join up all these points. And to show the direction of the graph, we put arrows on here to indicate that we're going in this direction. So we started here, went in this direction, and stopped here. To find an equivalent rectangular equation, we start from the given parametric equations. We knew we had that x is equal to 1 minus 2t, and y is equal to 1 plus t. Now, if we take this second equation, and just to be clear, we could pick either equation. I'm choosing the second one because it's simpler. If we take the second equation and solve it for t, this becomes t is equal to y minus 1. I just take the 1, throw it over here with the y. Now we will take this and substitute it in for t in the first equation. So now we have x is equal to 1 minus 2 times y minus 1. Simplifying, we get x is equal to 1 minus 2y plus 2 x is equal to 3 minus 2y. If we solve this equation for y, I will want my y variable to be positive, so I'm going to bring it to the left-hand side, and it becomes positive 2y. I'm going to take the x on the left-hand side and send it over to the right-hand side as negative x, and then we still have the plus 3. Dividing both sides by 2, we get that y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 3 halves. And we recognize that this is the slope-intercept form of a line whose slope is equal to negative 1 half and whose y-intercept is the point 0, comma, 3 halves. Now if we compare this to our graph that we drew earlier, we see that this makes sense with what we got there. The y-intercept is indeed 0, comma, 3 halves, and the slope is negative 1 half. So if we start at any point on the graph and go down by 1 and to the right by 2, we end up on another point on the graph. So this indeed gives us the equation in rectangular form for the plane curve. We are being asked 
to describe the orientation of the plane curve. So that means you just describe in words what the curve does. So one way to imagine it is if you were on the phone with someone so they couldn't see what was in front of you and you had to describe to them what was happening, what would you say? So we would say something like this. C travels along part of the line y equals negative one-half x plus three halves from three zero to negative seven five. So that explains that the plane curve does not travel the entire infinite length of the line. It only travels part of that line starting at the point three zero and ending at the point negative seven five. In this example, we have to find an equivalent rectangular equation, sketch C, which you know is the plane curve, and describe its orientation. We are given the parametric equations, x is equal to negative 2 times the square root of 1 minus t squared, and y is equal to t. We are told that the absolute value of t has to be less than or equal to 1. So remember we just reviewed inequalities involving absolute value and you know this will mean that negative 1 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 1. Now to find an equivalent rectangular equation we need to eliminate the t variable. In this case it's going to be pretty easy because the second parametric equation says that y is equal to t. So we will be able to replace the t in the x parametric equation with y. So now it becomes x is equal to negative 2 times the square root of 1 minus y squared. To get it into the standard form of one of the equations we've just studied, we can square both sides. We have x squared is then equal to 4 times the quantity of 1 minus y squared. Simplifying, we get that x squared is equal to 4 minus 4y squared. We gather up the x and y terms on the left hand side and we get x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 4. We need to have a 1 over here on the right hand side. So let's divide both sides by 4. And the left hand side becomes x squared over 4 plus y squared over 1 is equal to 1. Now because both the x and the y are squared, and there is a plus sign between them, we recognize that this is going to be the graph of an ellipse. The center is going to be at 0, 0 because there's nothing in with the x and nothing in with the y. The horizontal axis 
will equal the square root of whatever is under the x, so that's 4, so the horizontal axis is 2, the vertical axis will be the square root of whatever is under the y, which is a 1, square root of 1 is 1, So now we know the center, horizontal axis, and vertical axis of our ellipse. What we don't know is if the plane curve, C, will travel the entire ellipse or just part of the ellipse. So what you want to do at this point is to just use a dotted line to sketch this ellipse and then we will use our t interval to decide how much or how little of the ellipse the plane curve travels. Because the horizontal axis and vertical axis are so small, I think that I will choose to expand my x and y axes. And so the vertical axis, I will say 1 is here, negative 1 is here, on the horizontal axis, I'll go 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, just so my graph isn't so tiny. And then I will dot in the ellipse. To determine how much of the ellipse gets traveled by the plane curve, C, we will make use of our interval on the parameter t. So let's plug in some values here. We know that we will use t in order to determine the values for x and y. x is going to equal negative 2 times the square root of 1 minus t squared and we know that y is equal to t. We always try to plug in the easiest points we can. Since t has to go from negative 1 to positive 1, I would just try plugging in the integer values, negative 1, 0, and 1. And if I can get enough information from those three points, then I can be done. And if not, I can always choose to plug in some points between those values. Now if t is negative 1, then x is going to be negative 2 times the square root of 1 minus negative 1 squared. Now of course this becomes 1 minus 1, which is equal to 0, and negative 2 times 0 is equal to 0. To get our y value, it's always going to be really simple. It's exactly equal to the value of t, so that will be negative 1. So that means we are starting at the point 0, negative 1. Next, we plug in t is 0, so x will equal negative 2 times the square root of 1 minus 0 squared, so that's going to be negative 2. The y value just equals t, so it is 0, and we will plot the point negative 2, 0. We know that the curve has to travel along the architecture of an ellipse. So I don't really need to plug in any points in between here because I know it has to travel along this path. So I can go ahead and draw that much in. And I will be sure to put an arrow here indicating the direction. Next we can plug in t is equal to 1. So then the x value will be negative 2 times the square root of 1 minus 1 squared. 
of course this becomes zero which wipes out the whole term so x is equal to zero the y value is equal to t so it is equal to one and we see that it's going to end at the point zero one So it will travel along the curve of the ellipse in this direction. We can't plug in any values for t that are bigger than 1 or smaller than negative 1. So we see that the entire plane curve is just going to travel along part of this ellipse. When we describe the orientation, we could say something like C travels along the left half of the ellipse. x squared over 4 plus y squared over 1 equals 1 clockwise from 0, negative 1 to 0, 1. And that would be plenty enough to describe how C travels.